Hi, I'm Odin, and welcome to DIY Prop Shop, where we build props. Well, this time, I'm gonna use an interesting item I found off the internet without breaking the bank. And today, I'm gonna to make the Neuralizer from Men in Black. The Neuralizer wipes the memory of someone, allowing an MIB agent to implant new memories in place of the crazy things the witness just saw. It has a set of dials in the back to pinpoint just how far back in time the memories will be replaced. And so to make my neuralizer, I figured I could either cut off pieces of PVC pipe, I could take epoxy clay and round off the ends, or on Amazon I found this travel toothbrush set. In fact, just looking at it, I'm almost done already. It's already got the clip, I can reuse the cap pretty much as is, and if I remove the toothbrush and the toothpaste well, I can use this end for the light. So that'll take care of the outside. Now I need to make the part that actually pops up. And to do that, I could use a toilet paper roller. I mean, it practically does the right action already. I bought a couple of different ones because I didn't know what size I was gonna need. Turns out the one from Walmart actually is gonna fit perfectly in the cap of the travel toothbrush. Not only to get the spring, but this part does fit inside. Now the one issue that I've found with the Walmart one directly out of its package is that the spring is too strong and it's not gonna stay together. What I ended up doing was actually finding a lighter weight one at a thrift store, but it was still brand new, and the spring is less springy. <laughs> and this one seems to work out okay. It is still gonna fly out, but not with nearly as much force. The basic concept we've now got. It's already chrome, I just gotta be careful not to scratch it up. It's able to depress, it'll hold itself in place temporarily. I need to make the control surface and add a light at the top. So my first thought is to cover the chrome with protective tape so I don't scratch it all up while I cut out the part that's still exposed. And then I'll lay in a new piece of styrene and glue the control surface onto that. I'll use a piece of plywood to steady the ruler so I can keep the cuts on the roller straight. Then I'll carefully carve the corners to remove the pieces I don't want. I think it's styrene, that's good, it'll glue nicely. I cut a three quarter inch strip of sheet styrene and trim it to fit. That's the start to my control surface. Ultimately, I wanna be able to screw this on so I can change the batteries later for the light. So I'm gonna cut out a couple small strips and glue them in so I can screw this in. All right, so if I'm gonna put this panel on here for the controls, I need to cover up this hole and that hole. That's what the smaller pieces were cut for. So I'm gonna glue those in, and then I will trim them to fit after the glue is set up. Since I wanna spring load this to make this part pop up, in order to keep this actually attached, I thought I would use a hair tie as a shock absorber. I'm gonna cut the hair tie and tie it in a knot. I'm gonna epoxy it into the bottom of this, and then I can feed it through the hole that's in the toilet paper holder. If I tie it at the right length, then it'll pop open where I want. The other end of the toothbrush, I'm only concerned about these two parts. So I'm gonna cut it off and remove them and then see what I've got to work with. I don't wanna use the entire dome because it's too big. So I'm gonna try my best to cut it off just the tip. Oh really, is the whole thing? Well, I was hoping that would come out. I want the chrome ring. Yeah, I was really kinda of hoping that this was a ring and it is not. I'm gonna to have to use a drill press and a Forstner bit and just hope that I don't just explode it because it's all the same thickness. That's smooth, it worked. <laughs> Did exactly what it was supposed to do and it didn't blow up, that's amazing. In order to make this fit over this, which is what I like to do, I'm actually gonna to have to grind this out now. What I find amazing is it never exploded. Now, with all the heat I made from the Dremel, let's see if I ruined the finish. Good. I'm gonna need to cut a window here for the light to come out. So what I wanna do is pull this back off. I'm gonna need to take the chrome off because glue won't stick to the chrome. Once I glue it back together, I can come back with the Dremel and cut out a window for the light to come out. So while I wait for the glue to dry, I think I'm gonna cannibalize some electronic parts because a flashy thingy isn't gonna be able to do much if it doesn't actually light up. So what I thought I'd start with is a headlamp that I picked up for a dollar. I'll use the white lights from that for the actual flashing part. 
Between the first and the second movie, the neuralizer changed colors. In the first movie, it was red. That's what I want to do. And to make the red, I'm going to use an LED mini glow stick. I'm just going to gut this, get the one LED out of it, and that'll make it glow. So this will provide me my battery pack, because this will actually fit inside the neuralizer. I'm going to turn it on, it'll make the end glow red. All I want out of this is the LED. I don't care about the rest of the flashlight. The circuit board on this guy is so simple. Basically, all the parts I don't care about are on one side. So if I just cut it here, I'll have my two leads that go to the three LEDs that I do want. Now, if I'm lucky, this will easily fit into the top. I'm going to trim it down a little bit. Because I cut all the electronics off of the LED lights, I'm going to have to wire up my own switches to be able to make everything light up. I can use the switch out of this light up bracelet, which is nice and tiny and an actual switch. And then for the momentary switch, I found this at the Goodwill and that'll work fine. Batteries are dead here, who cares? First, I'll use the Dremel to widen the space of the battery. Then I can carefully cut out the window for the lights. I'll repurpose the clear plastic from the LED flashlight for the lens on my neuralizer. I can heat it up and bend it over an 11 millimeter socket to give the curve that I need to fit my cutout. And then I can glue it in place. I'll need to trim down the white LED board to fit, add some wire to it, and then I can hot glue them in place behind the red LED. Getting the wiring right was actually kind of tricky, but I got the switch to turn the power on and off and by pressing the momentary button, I can change the light from red to white. Now I had used CAT5 wire because I have a ton of it, but it was so stiff, it caused more problems than if I just used softer stranded wire. Now I wanna start bringing this thing together. I'm gonna to take the blue masking tape off, put the spring into the lid, feed the hair ties through the hole here, tie a knot in it so it springs to the level that I want, and then I can glue the control surface on and put the lid on. I'll cut out a circle of styrene plastic and glue that onto the top piece, so it'll be easy to glue that onto the chrome part. I actually managed to get glue on there without getting glue on the paint. Wow. I'll need to cut a notch into the control plate to fit the switch. So I need to lay out the control surface. There are three dials that go on here for the settings for how far back you want to erase memories. I can either cut those circles out of styrene and do my best, or I'll just open up a travel game and use the discs that come in this. I need to drill a hole right here. This is the original button from the toy, and I figure if I put that through my control surface and then glue my black button on top of this, then if I ever remove this and try and play with the electronics, the whole thing will come free instead of just gluing it directly to the switch. Of course, they're not supposed to be yellow, so I'm going to spray paint them black first. If you stick little parts to tape, they won't fly away when you spray paint them. I can start the final assembly. I'll reuse the micro screws from the red toy to attach the silver faceplate, and I'll glue the black buttons on. So I'm scraping down to the plastic because I can't use the plastic cement directly on the paint. It won't stick. Plastic needs to glue to plastic. I then carefully glue the last button on, making sure I don't glue it to the control surface. And here's my neuralizer from Men in Black. It was a bit of an adventure getting the electronics to work on this thing. Besides, in the original movie, they didn't have one that would both spring up and flash at the same time. Let us know in the comments if there's any other project you'd like to see us do. If you try any of these builds for yourself, send us a picture at DIYPropShop at break.com. And don't forget to subscribe. Hi, I'm Odin, and welcome to DIY Prop Shop.